I think um, we all agree that uh, pre-cut is a useful rescue technique for difficult biliary cannulation. And uh, we also know that uh, several um, RCT have shown that uh, there is an association between pre-cut sphincterotomy and post-ESCP pancreatitis because um, um, when we perform pre-cut or a prolonged cannulation of the papilla, then we have a papillary trauma from the repeated cannulation. And my first question to you is now, um, when should be pre-cut employed? Um, what will be the best timing for pre-cut? Maybe first Janine and then Horst and then Amit. Yeah, I think if you get more experience, it moves up uh, in front of your amentarium. Um, so if I would s say it is should be quite upfront in your approach to a papilla. Should you directly start with it? Um, I do not know. I also remember the cases where you just easily go in with a swing tome without doing any cutting at all. Uh, so for me, yes, it's upfront, but it's not the first uh, technique to use. Horst? Um, well, I think it's only justified after failure of conventional techniques. So I defined what is a difficult biliary access, and this is only seen in 10 to 15 percent of the cases. And then we can discuss which kind of pre-cut is done. Uh, if you do as a primary step pre-cut, then I would like to refer to my last slide here, why I do not recommend an earlier an even earlier pre-cut. And this is an editorial just written in GI endoscopy by Freeman and his group. Uh, uh, pre-cut biliary sphincterotomy in ESCP don't reach for the needle knife quite so fast. Any advanced ESCP faculty members who have worked at tertiary referral centers, and especially those who review medical practice suits, know how potentially disastrous pre-cut sphincterotomy can be in the wrong setting and wrong hands. And this is not only PEP, but also uh, perforation. So I think I strongly recommend to don't use it as a first step. If the patient develops a complication, this will be considered as malpractice. And uh, Amit referred to early pre-cut versus con uh, continuous uh, um, cannulation. But this was only shown in the subgroup of experienced endoscopists that the PAP rate is lower. In the overall results, there was no significant difference. But Horst, um, these data are all performed with a needle knife. Yes. Don't you think we have the wrong equipment for, for the pre -cut? Yeah, we wait for data for the, for the ampelotome. So yes. I, I, I'm not aware of any multi-center trial, no data on this uh, ampelotome. And therefore, it is done by experts. It looks very nice. Uh, but of course, it has to be proven in an appropriate uh, study. But the question would be, if you had this um, new equipment, this new instrument available, would you use it? No, because uh, I, I feel very comfortable with a needle knife. And uh, as I've shown in, in my case, the advantage is even if you're not able to get the tip of the device into the uh, papillary orifice, you can proceed to a needle knife synchrotomy. I think if it's done, and if we have multiple studies to show how effective a uh, needle knife is if it's done in a proper uh, setting by experts. But you still have to um, consider that uh, all the approaches we are doing on the papilla are completely blind. So um, we go into the papilla and we blindly try to get in the um, in the in the bile duct. Uh, don't you think it is better to have um, with this potential new equipment um, ampulotomy, a day roofing of the papilla, that you have a better anatomical view to identify the papilla, to identify the um, pancreatic orifice, and then to precisely cannulate um, I don't bile duct? Know. Uh, I think it depends on the expertise. I, I would consider if somebody is not so experienced with this device and has this uh, device in the finally in the pancreatic orifice, then you cut in the pancreas, you have no wire in the pancreas, whereas uh, if you have an unattended access, I strongly recommend to place a wire, then you have already protected the pancreas. Mm. And uh, the needle knife is not blind. As I've shown you, you split the papillary roof and then you have the nice same vision after ampulotomy uh, when you split the, uh, the 
papillary roof. <coughs> the, well, the needle knife is not blind, <coughs> but you have a relatively instable position. And with this device, you can clearly place on the papilla, you have more stability, and then to cut in the direction of 11 o'clock. Uh, okay, you are pupils <laughs> from NIP, and I think uh, you are dedicated uh, to uh, organize a randomized control trial. <laughs> okay, let's ask for <laughs> the position of uh, Amit. Uh, it's a very, very interesting discussion, uh, which I heard. But I just want to tell you one thing that uh, once you are an expert, whether you use a needle knife or you use the Sohendra type of Erlang and pre-cut spigdrotome, both are easy. Both you can achieve with extreme ease. Because till that time, in your mind, you have already understood the anatomy of the course of the bile duct behind what you see. But for a beginner, if you want to start learning the pre-cut, I have a feeling a uh, better control can be achieved by using the ampulotome or the Sohendra pre-cut sphingrotome. In fact, after my training from Nip Sohendra, when I came back to India, in the initial five years, I had and I was using the Sohendra pre-cut sphingrotome. But then these type of sphingrotomes became unavailable because Cook stopped manufacturing it and I did not get the handle from Germany by which I could attach the tip of the sphingrotome. So I myself started using the needle knife over the last 15, 20 years. And slowly over a period, initially I always found that using the needle knife, my cut used to go too deep, in spite of doing numerous ERCPs. And with the movement of the duodenum, sometimes my cut used to go zigzag and that used to cause more charring. So I used to start thinking, what am I doing? Well, is there, why can't I get this other mm -hmm. sphincterotome back? Not because I was used to the Swain Raprikat sphincterotome. But now that I'm routinely doing pre-cuts by both the techniques, I still personally feel, I fully agree with host that he can do an excellent job even with a needle knife. But that is because he's an expert ERCP specialist. But for a young, for a beginner in ERCP, if you want to learn the pre-cut, I think it's important that we do uh, practice it with this uh, pre-cut, uh, lung and pre-cut sphincterotome. One thing, of course, uh, though I'm tempted, to believe uh, Professor Sohendra's algorithm that you should begin directly with a pre-cut. I think today's scenario, because of excellent glide wire techniques, because we routinely use hydrophilic glide wires, cannulation can be achieved quite easily in almost 80 to 90% of the times. So it is not necessary, I think, to start directly with a pre-cut, but with five attempts or with five minutes of trial, if you don't enter the bile duct, it is definitely justified that we should go ahead with a pre-cut. And I, in fact, favored in favor of pre-cut rather than doing a U.S. guided approach, even though our department is one of the most active U.S. departments in our country. Okay, thank you, Amit. I think that was a very interesting di discussion. There are still open questions and still open controversies in endoscopy. And uh, I think um, Professor Sohendra for giving us this uh, special um, visionary lecture. Um, I think we somehow really defined that there is still a problem which we have to solve. And uh, thank you very much, Janine. Thank you very much, Horst. Thank you very much, Amit, for this interesting discussion. And thank you for you for joining us. And uh, we are at the end of uh, our meeting. And um, together with uh, Stefan Groth, we would like to say bye bye. We thank the 668 um, people which were on the internet joining our meeting and um, all our discussions, all our presentations, live demonstrations, you can see at our YouTube channel. And I thank all the presenters, all the organizers, the industry for supporting our meeting. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you in two years again in Zurich live.